Hey yo together and very welcome to today's clan war between Pro Kings and NG. My name is Alex Asher and I'm casting this action this evening. So I hope you all enjoy. Well I'm going to give my best, to try my best, uh, this casting now. Okay, so here we are, game number one, best of five if I'm not mistaken. I'm not quite sure about that. But it should be normally clan wars are best of five. So we have in the top right hand side of Daybreak Letter Edition for Team Pro Kings it is Patak the Red Zerg. And his opponent in the blue in the bottom left hand side also Zerg it is Jig. So here we are CVC. And I'm just sorting out some stuff while I'm casting. I didn't stream for quite some time, so if my microphone is too loud, too quiet, or anything like that, uh, please, please, please let me know. Just let me know, and then I can fix it in between the games. So for Patak, we have uh, Hatchery, Hatch Gas Pool, standard opening, which you can also play against Terran, but in this case, it is against Zerg, and for Jig as well. So mirror matchup. And so far, also uh, the uh, mirror build order, very interesting. Okay, I have to say I didn't watch too many CVCs lately, um, but I don't think too much has changed in in this matchup. I could be wrong, of course. But from the balance patches, I don't think too much did change so far. Interesting to note, Ptak is going for a bunch of circlings. While this is not the choice for Jig, he goes into more drones. But oh, Ptak with the Baneling Nest. And did this Overlord scout it? No! Okay, so if, if Ptak can hide this tech choice, uh, from Trick long enough. Oh, <laughs> he's going for the third hatchery. This can be devastating. I mean, a bailing attack, maybe even an all in, can be so strong against the opening Trick has chosen here. And he goes for bailing this now himself. He sees all the circling, so he knows he gets a spine crawler here and a bailing this himself. Queen's in position. Not really blocking the ramp. There you go. Maybe he should get up a little bit more so that the surface area for, for the circlings is not that high, uh, that big. And yeah, hold hold command for the queens. That is also very important. But <laughs> nice drone block. Some drones will fall definitely here. There are now speedlings for Jig as well. And the banelings are rolling in. They need the good connections, otherwise, this all in is quite over. The duck is droning behind that. Baning connections are quite good. The own banings for Jig are morphing right here. Huge detonations. The queens are falling and ah, uh, he could have gone in and deal lots of damage but he's a little bit scared. One bailing not enough to kill anything here. Drones have too much HP as you can see. It's good for for weakening units if you want to but ah, oh, he tried to he tried to time the bailing detonation with the uh, hatching of the circlings that was so cute, but actually it didn't work out as planned. Now Pitak going for the roaches behind that, also very interesting. And yeah, those circlings won't do much here. This this is just for scouting. They might get a drone or two, which is nice. Oh yeah, getting a drone for only one circlings that was really good. Uh, but you shouldn't lose more here. Just go back. Yeah, that's fine. And Jig actually, he's behind in supply. And he's behind in drones as well. But he got the third hatch. He did cancel it, I think. I'm not quite sure, but I think he did cancel it somehow, some way. Maybe he needed the, the minerals. And panic a little. Oh, the bailings! Ooh, that was so good for Jig. That was so good. I don't think those bailings will get any more huge detonations because Ptak can see it with the overlords. 
There's a Pino position as well, safety banelings as well. So he will be fine. Uh, but that one connection was really good. That was really good. So the roaches are out for Patak. Jig somewhat is heavily supply capped. Uh, Patak is skyrocketing in supply now with the roaches as they take two supply each. And he's moving out. And to be honest, for Jig it's looking quite grim. I don't think he can hold this hatchery. He's moving down the spine crawler now. Uh, the spine should be there in time. Spine time rhyme. Oh yeah. And <laughs> but with those roaches and a heavy link flood afterwards as well, this could be a game-ending attack here. The spine crawler now out of position. Oh goodness, no. Bailing's not doing well against roaches, I can tell you. This queen falls. The corrosive bites not really connecting here. The ravagers are helpful, but there are so many roaches. If he would have split a little bit against the bailings, that would have been nice, but he's going in, focus firing the ravagers and the queen as best as he can. More bailings and circling streaming across the map. I think Tuck got it and will give uh, Pro Kings the lead here. Yeah, that's looking really good. Look at the drone car on that. It Ptak wins this game. Very well done.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game number two of this best of seven Clan War all kill format. I checked it now. It is not a best of five, it is a best of seven all kill format. So we have this time an overgrowth ladder edition in the orange trunks, uh, spawning in the top right hand position, playing for the nocturnal gamers. It is Zinigard. And his opponent spawning cross position, of course, in the red, in the bottom left hand side for Pro Kings. It is the Red Zerg. Ptuck! And will he play the same style again or not? That's the big question. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, the score 1 0 for the Pro Kings. Oh, good. It is a pool first, but. Zinigod going also for the pool first. Interesting. Here's a hatchery, there's a hatchery. No, there's no hatchery. There's the hatchery. Late hatchery for Zinigod. What's happening here? Ah, he did go for the gas. Now I get it. Okay, so gas for Zinigod and no gas for Ptuck. He's just now grabbing his extractor. And is this for a potential... No. What is this drone doing here? This is... I am wondering about this little drone. Ha! Huh. I don't know if that move was efficient or not. Instead of having it be uh, oversaturated uh, minerals, but it was weird to say the least. And he's just mining now with one drone, the gas. So no early speed. And uh oh, Senegal going in with the roaches. And the speed as well. So, I would say he is not looking for any macro game. He wants to get the pressure on. Uh, put the pressure on to Ptuck. And he definitely can. And because Ptuck's gas was so late and he still is just mining with one drone, this could be devastating. Our roaches are really strong. If you don't have speed links for a quick surround, it's even more difficult. And one queen and two circlings should be enough to combat those six circlings if the queen doesn't get surrounded, but yeah, that's looking really good here for Senegal. Don't know why Tuck is fighting this. He did really good micro, so that's that, but mm, now he gets the scout. That's the most important part. He now knows, uh-oh, early roach worn and speed on the way. If he did uh, look at the spawning pool, wibbly wobbling, he doesn't know about the banding nest. He might get a kill here, maybe even two kills. Ah, so close! Eight range queen, not enough for this overlord to get killed. But yeah, the roaches are moving across the map. And what does Ptak have to defend? Nothing. Really nothing. Queen's out of position, off creep. This one with the transfuse, so crucial, but it's hunting down on overlord, which is not really good here. Yeah, this queen. So important, will get taken out, and this transfuse could have been so massive. But no, it's not meant to be. The roaches are coming, scared of this one spine crawler. He should send in the circlings first. Instead, he's morphing banelings and waiting for more reinforcements. And yeah, uh, this this attack can definitely work. Ptak has a lot of minerals banked in. He needs to spend this money somehow. He got two larva left. Which is making drones off. Very interesting choice. The Banelings going into the spine crawler, dealing massive damage, killing it. Very nicely done. And yeah, I don't think Ptak can hold this here. Not as easily as he wants to. The drones need to fight as well. The king goes down. And the roaches focus firing the circlings, which make them <coughs> vulnerable to counterattacks. With the upcoming roaches, maybe Ptak can hold. But the damage is there. It's not quite enough, so uh, Zenigot needs to deal more damage with the reinforcements moving across the map. And maybe he can. Ptak micro his heart out. Oh, nice cancel on the Ravager there. He tries to save it. And this Ravager could actually finish, which would be an awesome save. Uh, I think somehow, <laughs> some way, Ptak managed to hold this. He did lose quite some units, so he's not out of this pressure. Yet, but the counter attack can be 
massive as well. So now Sinigot needs to be uh, on the defense. He's droning, which I disagree with. He just saw the army of Tuck. And even though it's small, it's very powerful. And if, if Tuck would choose to go heavy oh, 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 oh heavy into into units for a counterattack as well, there wouldn't be much left for Sinigot to do or to defend at all, so. Yeah, very, very risky in my opinion. Maybe the corrosive fire could kill this overlord. Oh nice hit! One more and the overlord is gone. Which would <laughs> also supply uh, blocks in got here. Will he get the kill on the overlord? Come on, you just saw it. Come on! Uh nice! Nice snipe! That's that's um that's um what what is what what is this called? Uh, no no scope? I don't know. <laughs> I don't play those games, but if if you do, you know what I want to talk about. So, ah, uh, this is not looking too good for Tuck. Ah, with upcoming roaches, it should be enough. Good micro back. As soon as the serpents are gone, he can take this fight head on. He got the ravager, which is really strong. It can force the roaches to split and move back instead of shoot. And yeah, uh, synagogue is looking to fall here. It's, it's not looking good. There we go. GG and Ptuck wins game number two.
Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, I hope the microphone is muted and we are here in game number 3 of this clan war between Pro Kings and Nocturnal Gamers. As we have on Newkirk Precinct in the bottom left hand side in the red for the Pro Kings it is Ptak! Who seems to be unstoppable in CVC. So that's the reason why Nocturnal Gamers Sent out the blue Protoss in the bottom left hand side. It is not Kaparos, it is Micros. And he's going for a pylon gate with an early scout <laughs> as this guy, Micros. He he maybe maybe he saw the games and is like, oh wow, this guy is so cheeky. But he knows exactly the time to be super annoying and block the hatchery. If he can get a pylon there, that would be even more annoying if he wants to do this. He could, and uh, Ptak is like, <laughs> you know what, screw that! I'm gonna go expand in the low ground. And he's going to expand right here at the low ground. The probe will scout around, being super annoying. And wow, that's bonding pool position. Wow, not, not wasting any time or, or potential resources on lost mining time anymore. So, hatch gas pool for Ptak. A little bit delayed, but it's fine. And Mike Ross going for the Nexus afterwards. I think we will see a gay, uh, cybernetics core. There we go. Gas already taken as well. So nothing really special in this game so far. Yeah. Microphone is muted. That's good. And <laughs> he scouts a long, long time. I don't know if, if, if that is worth it to keep the probe that long here in the in the opponent's base. Because what are you gonna see? Nothing basically, and you're just wasting mining time. Be a little bit on maybe a little bit annoying. But that's it. And Mike Ross now with the warp gate research, the adapt, a second gas being taken. You should see the mothership core, I think. Quite Soon, pretty soon. But in this case, it's Stargate. Okay, that's that's also fine. You can go for the Stargate here. In this case, mm, maybe an Oracle. You can also open with a Void Ray or a Phoenix, just to hunt down one or two Overlords. Uh, that totally works as well. Normally, you should see an Oracle first, I would say. But you will see. He could also try a Carrier at some point. I mean, it is viable. In PvC nowadays, I would say, I think. Mass Carrier is still a thing. And yeah, we see the Mothership Core and the second Gateway, which is quite good. And there we have Pneumatized, Carapace, and Speed Links, of course, Link Speed. So, what will be the first? Phoenix! Ah, Phoenix! Okay, no Oracle here, straight into Phoenix production, which is fine. Uh, totally works out. Two adapts here at the front. Just in case of any circling run bias or pokes. So he's safe. And what this base basically does is it would enable Ptak to spread creep more aggressively than usually. And he should start it. He should start creep pretty soon. Like connect the bases and get the creep spread starting. Which he is opting for I think with this queen. I guess. We will see soon. Let's see what his timing on this screen is. How pro is he? Ah, two energy, three energy, four, five, seven, ten almost. Okay, he's a little bit lazy with the creep spread. Maybe looking on this Phoenix, killing one overlord, supply blocking plug there. There we go with the creep tumor and some circlings, but there are adepts and a fairly early third nexus in my opinion and not much to defend two adepts very good positioning and the mothership core could put an overcharge Mike Ross choose not to do so instead drops in a bunch of adepts and now he's fine those adepts can take on those circlings that's totally viable two phoenixes are out mm. Gunbuster giving tips here Nice, nice, nice. Glad he does it in the observer chat, otherwise we would need to restart the game normally. 
So please, if you wanna chat, make sure you chat in Observer Chat or go into Twitch Chat. There are 60, 60 seconds delay, which should be enough. Uh, oh, this Phoenix super breached. Oh wow, need to be very careful on 6 HP. 6 HP. Uh, robotics facility goes down, and yeah, the circlings they scout this uh, that there. There is no entrance into the space. So Ptak tries to, but what he really would need is uh, some some drop overlords. I think that could actually work, even though it wouldn't be the best thing to do. Uh, oh wow, Mike Ross supply block quite heavily, like 10 seconds now. This this is a long time, but Ptak also supply block and for now just going for circlings circling circling circlings but there is the layer tech finishing up and hydrus are his choice they don't have seven range anymore with the upgrade only six but they still have the speed upgrade so this can be very viable we will see how those hydrus will do in this game against Mike Ross uh, very interesting to see how the or again, how the change titleless will do now in this particular scenario, I would say. So the Phoenix is still on the hunt. They could find this Overlord, choose to do not. It's okay. And yeah, it is indeed best of seven pro kings. Up two games so far. Ptak won all of those. And. Yeah, the nocturnal gamers, they need to step it up just a little bit to be able to win. So now we can see Ptak going into a macro game and we can maybe... We should see now how good he is in those kind of games. The first two games were quite quick. But this is actually a macro game and it's fairly even I would say. So let's see... Watch and learn and see how comfortable Tuck is. Oh, he finds a free queen! Bye bye, queen! There are the Hydrolis, base not connected. And as you can see, they, the Hydrolis have 5 range so far. Oh, he didn't finish the queen? Ah, there we go. Okay. And no speed upgrade so far. And he's morphing the Hydrolis then into a Lurker then, so he can morph the Hydrolis into Lurker. Which is also really, really good. I just wonder, did Mike Ross see this? No, he has no idea. Maybe he anticipates it. That, that could be the case. He's going in for, for uh, charge lots. Can work as well. But against against Lurker, you need either a 6 around or just even long, longer range weapons like uh, Disruptor. Or Carrier can work as well at some point I would say. Or just a lot of immortal but then you need a good concave. You can't, for example you could not push up this ramp if there are five lurker here holding with some roaches or circlings. That's typically not a good move. I love this move. Uh, three lurker and twelve circlings. They should be enough to wreck this entire economy in the main base and maybe even kill some gateways if, if that's what he chooses to. But of course you should also try to do some counter attack at the same uh, time at the third base. But now Mike Ross is moving out and Ptak is not ready for this. He has one lurker. Where's the observer? There is no observer with this army. So while one lurker is no big problem, it still dishes out a lot of damage. Because they have splash and this is huge. And one overload going into the third base as it looks like. Mike Ross switching to the fourth base of Tuck. And Tuck needs to, to fight this here now. Sick drops, dealing massive damage. It's looking really good, but he needs to defend at the front. Which, because of the lurker, I think he can. There is nothing to detect the lurker. So he will lose this fight while getting completely obliterated in all of the remaining bases. That was such a checkmate move, and there we go! Ptak wins game number three.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen. We do have the wrong race. Okay. Nice. Cool. And I was so hyped because of this TVT, uh, TVC, which now will not happen. And now I'm sad. Now I'm really sad to not see a Terran this day. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this today's clan war between Pro Kings and Nocturnal Gamers. As we have Matchball Game. Oh yeah, we have a Matchball Game and spawning in the bottom left hand side of Echo Letter Edition in the red as Surf playing for the Pro Kings. It is Ptak. And his opponent spawning in the top left hand side in pink. Can he prevent? Can he prevent the for all all kill swipe? Playing for the nocturnal gamers, it is the die die sacro. I think die 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 sacro. Die sacro. I think it's called. But I'm not quite sure. In German, I would say die sacro, but I'm I'm pretty sure that's wrong. So die sacro. That's the way I call him now. I should be fine. If not, let me know. And he's going in with the hatch gas pool. A little bit risky considering 
uh, how Ptak normally <laughs> uh, did win the other two CVCs just recently in this clan world, but it is okay, you can do this. Uh, Ptak this time going in with the, I think it was Pool Hatch Gas. But I'm not quite sure. Didn't really look at it. But yeah, I, I think it was Pool Pool Hatch Gas. Which is also fine. Small little tweaks in each build order, which is nice. So some circlings for scouting and poking and of course to be safe. Because there was no scouting whatsoever for Ptak so far. And now scouting for the Zakro. Um, he just sees now the circlings moving across the map. And normally those circlings don't do too much damage, but they can be devastating. They can. They definitely can. So there are two circlings out for the Zakro. Uh, the Zakro and yeah, haha, <laughs> that's not enough. Drones will fall. At least they should. Oh, that micro is so good. So the queen pops out. The drones survive. Okay. But those overlords should be dead soon as well. There's a spine crawler and a bailing nest. Daitsakuro completely misreading the whole situation. Thinking of an uh, uh, attack coming out of Tuck. But he is droning and throwing down a spine crawler himself. Just to be safe. I think one drone died, two drones, whoa, and an uh, overlord as well. And a second one could fall here if Tuck would choose to do so, which he currently is not. Just donating some circlings. Ah, poo, didn't forget the microphone. That happened so often to me, which is really bad. So I always should check twice. Okay, there's a roach wall now on the way, as well as one evolution chamber. The wall is locked. Those twins doing Hoda's job very well. They hold the door, and I don't know if Daitakuro can do much here in this situation now, aggressively speaking. He's ahead in drones. He's not far behind in tech, I would say. He has bailings instead of roaches, which is also okay. He just needs to make sure he doesn't die. He wants to scout, but uh, careful! Oh, don't, don't, don't lose the circlings! No, uh, risky. So interestingly, Ptak circlings don't have speed at all. He made so many circlings, but has no speed for them, which is a little bit weird. But hey, if it works, sure. Why not? Ah, uh, the bailings are morphing! They will get some good connections here! Ooh, yep, those were really good connections. Ah, uh, Daitsakuro can be proud of those two bailings who just suicided into a bunch of servings. And now let's see, Nidus Network for Tuck. Okay, Nidus Network. There's one overlord in position, and... Yeah, he should see it. Ptak, uh, the Takro should see it if Ptak goes for the Nidus network here. The, <laughs> the wall still locked. No way in for the uh, Takro, and the Nidus network is done soon. Five more seconds from now on, there are a bunch of queens. Not too many actually, and not too many roaches as well. However, the Nidus network is done. And will Daitakuro react in time? Will he see it? Or not? It's a big question. He saw it! He saw it! Pulling the drones, pulling everything! Panic mode! Defend as best as you can! Not killing the Nidus network in time! The transfusers come out! The queens as well! Good connections with the banelings! They should go into this clump of roaches! But <laughs> it's not enough! The spine crawler falls! Most forces from Daitakuro died as well, and I think we are looking at a 4-0 clean sweep swipe uh, out of uh, Ptak for Pro Kings. 
This looks so GG. And there we go. Pro Kings, 4 O's, the Nocturnal Gamers in today's Clan War. Okay, I think... I think that's it for today. Welcome the Greek gods to today's stream. I'm sad to say, but I think that's it. Pro Kings won. I'm just confirming before shutting down. <laughs> Not that we need to play more games. Could be a best of nine. Who knows? Pr uh, suddenly, more games to come. And then I would switch off the stream. That wouldn't be good. Okay, guys, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for today's clan war. Pro Kings win 4 to 0 over the Nocturnal Gamers. Thank you so much for watching today, for tuning in. And if you enjoyed, you are free to hit that follow button. You can also follow me on Twitter or most preferably on YouTube where I do a lot of stuff. You will also find the VOD of this clan war today uh, on YouTube. I will upload it, so make sure to check my YouTube channel out. It's also alexasha 92 And yeah, there you find more StarCraft 2 content, also coaching and so on. Okay, with that said, I'm done for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. As always, I wish you a very nice day and goodbye.